PC Specialist Sentinel is powered by AMD Threadripper Pro rather than your regular Threadripper. And that means it is not a PC, it's a workstation. You might not know the ins and outs of Threadripper Pro, so let's have a quick chat about that. Last June, nine months ago, AMD launched Threadripper Pro, which despite the name is really a very slightly cut down epic rather than a grown up Threadripper. But it falls between Threadripper and epic so you can go up to 64 cores this particular workstation has a 32 core part the threadripper pro has support for up to two terabytes of memory in eight channels and that's the big difference between threadripper and epic threadripper has four channels ryzen has two epic has eight this has eight hence the arrangement of the memory four slots above the processor socket four slots below eight channel memory and it's ecc the memory you put in the threadripper system tends to be regular pc desktop memory this is more inclined towards the server end of the spectrum and therefore well suited to workstations so memory support is huge pci express gen 4 is doubled for threadripper pro versus threadripper I had a conversation with Luke about how AMD builds its processors from the chiplets and the I.O. die and he pointed out the I.O. die is hugely significant whereas Intel as far as we're aware has a part and then fuses off different features. In AMD's case they have different I.O. dies so by swapping out the I.O. die in a Threadripper for an epic I.O. die you actually end up with a completely different processor. In this instance what we have is a very slightly junior epic However, and this is the big news, it has the TDP 280 watts of Threadripper. Therefore, the clock speeds are very close to Threadripper. So we have essentially an Epic running at Threadripper speeds with a massive amount of eight channel DDR4 support and 128 lanes of PCI Express Gen 4 via storage and graphics. Hold on, Threadripper Pro was nine months ago. What's new here? That's a fair question. When Threadripper Pro launched, it was exclusive to Lenovo with their P620 workstation. Now you can buy Threadripper Pro. Also, there is now a choice of three different motherboards in addition to Lenovo's own board. You can get boards from Supermicro, Asus, or Gigabyte, so you can build your own Threadripper Pro system, or you can buy one from a system integrator such as PC Specialist. And that brings us to this Sentinel system. I'm warning you now, it's expensive. We're talking £5,200 including VAT. However, the components are high-end and they are also quite pricey. The case is a Fractal Design Define 7XL processor AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 3975WX. That's 32 cores, 64 threads, base speed 3.5 gigahertz, and it runs to just over 4 gigahertz. Processor cooler, Noctua NHU14S. It's the TR4 SP3 model that is specific to Threadripper. You will note the processor socket is oriented the wrong way around, which means the cooler is drawing air from the graphics card side of things and expelling it upwards. Motherboard. This is quite a mouthful. The Asus Pro WS WRX 80E Sage SE Wi-Fi. It's a huge motherboard with dual 10 gigabit NICs, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C, and support for multiple graphics cards. Price of this motherboard is around 750 pounds. Memory, we've got 128 gigabytes of eight channel Kingston DDR4 2666 ECC. If you want to step up to memory that's rated at 2933 megahertz, it'll cost an extra 188 pounds. 3200 megahertz memory will cost you 208 pounds. That sounds like a sensible upgrade. Graphics card is an AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT. You will note, not a pro graphics card. This is a gaming graphics card. Think about it. AMD doesn't do pro graphics cards that are any more recent than Vega. Even the latest Mac Pro has a Vega graphics card. Storage, we have a 500 gigabyte Samsung 980 Pro, that's the M.2 Gen 4 SSD that goes like the absolute clappers. And the storage drive is a two terabyte Samsung 870 QVO. That's a SATA drive, which is considerably slower, but backs up the main M.2 drive. 
power supply is a Corsair 1000 watt RMX rated gold. This is a first for me, I've dismantled a pre-built system during a review. Never done that before, and the reason is because you can't really see the details of the hardware inside the inky blackness of the fractal case. So I've pulled the main parts out, and I'm going to show you the key points of interest. But before I do that, have you subscribed to Kit Guru Tech? If you have, thank you very much. While you're at it, why not ring the bell? In a recent review, Andy asked the question, should you consider buying a pre-built system in order to get the components you otherwise might not be able to buy at all, or failing that, to buy them as a collective, which means you can buy them cheaper than the individual parts if you can find them on sale. This is a very good example of that situation. So we've got an RX 6900XT by XFX, which is just enormous. That is nominally a thousand pounds, but you know, good luck finding one on sale. We've then got the ASUS motherboard that I thought was £750, but it turns out it's £890, so that's obviously a huge amount of money. Uh, the Samsung 980 Pro SSD there is just over £100 for the 500GB version. The storage drive on the back, uh, the 2TB, is about £200. Pass by obviously is also a pretty penny. We've got something like £600 or £650 of ECC memory. And then we have the processor. The Threadripper Pro 3975WX is two and a half grand here in the UK. Threadripper Pro carries a hefty premium over regular Threadripper. Add those parts together and we've got 1900, 2500, five grand. These parts here, five grand, plus the case, plus the storage SSD, uh, 5100. Basically, the case, power supply, and potentially the storage drive and the cooler are free of charge. I mean, wow. So this is pushing the example to the extremes because we're talking £5,000 and a small percentage of £5,000 is obviously a huge amount of money. But there's absolutely no denying that that motherboard processor memory combo is a phenomenal sum of money and it just deserves a closer look. Key points of interest, apart from the curious location of the Prime M.2 slot, is the triple EPS connectors next to the 24 pin. We do have micro buttons in that kind of enthusiast style. -y. We've got the huge number of PCI Express Time 16 slots, and we've got the fact the memory slots are arranged above and below the CPU socket. I think we're all a little bit triggered by the fact these CPU is upside down. Clearly, if you're working in a rack environment, the processor doesn't matter which orientation it is, but for us, this is up, that is wrong. And then the fact that the CPU cooler, if it's an air cooler, fits on and it's drawing air from either above or below is also a bit peculiar. And then we turn to the I.O. panel and would you just look at that? 10 gigabit Ethernet and all the high speed USB 3.2 you could possibly desire. That's the primary SSD heatsink. These are the other SSD heatsinks. And this reveals the VRMs. I mean, blimey, just look at that, 16 phases. That's the PC Specialist Sentinel rebuilt, and while the first part of the video was showing how they have put it together, if you notice any changes now, I don't think there are any, but if you do, they're down to me. So from here on in, it's down to me, previously PC Specialist. I have an observation to make. We are used to pre-builts coming with various bits and pieces that are left over from all the various components. So there we have a Noctua, installation guide. Here we have the CPU socket blanks, a couple of grommets from the fractal case because it's in a, a huge motherboard that clearly overshadows some of the cable management holes. They've pulled out those grommets to put the board down tight. There's a spare SATA cable, there's a power supply cable, there are various other things in the box. And we also get this PCI Express riser card which accommodates M.2 storage drives. This comes with that monumentally expensive ASUS motherboard. I guess in the world of 890 pound motherboards, you get a few accessories. So in addition to all the other hardware I mentioned that's essentially free of charge, the case, the power supply, the storage SSD, and also this. Wow, it's just a different level of expense. And now it's time to discuss performance. 
Luke has reviewed various Threadrippers, including 64 core. I'm just going to give you a quick look at what 32 cores does in Blender Classroom, just as a reminder of what genuine processor grunt does. And finished and two minutes 29 seconds. Clearly that is impressive performance, no two ways about it. It's also worth noting the system is drawing 400 watts at the wall socket during that CPU only test. Now here's the thing, AMD has a chart telling you which Epic processor they recommend for which workload, because the more cores you have, the slower they run. And in addition with professional software, you've got license costs and they get really expensive. Kit Guru doesn't have the budget to spend tens of thousands of dollars a year for software licenses for the one or two workstations that we might get to benchmark. So we're sticking here with our regular suite of benchmark tests, such as Blender, Cinebench and 7-Zip, which happily are free of charge. Now here's the thing, in every single test I ran, the Threadripper Pro was very slightly slower than the regular Threadripper because it runs at slightly lower clock speeds. So the takeaway here is if you want simple CPU performance, you should be looking to Threadripper. However, if you're in that nuanced position where you're also interested in memory bandwidth, it's a different story. The memory that PC Specialist has installed in this review sample of Sentinel is slow and it also has really poor latency. However, eight channels means the bandwidth is just monumental. Clearly, if the memory was faster and had lower latency, it would be even better. You can see, and this is just the extraordinary thing, that the Sentinel is both top of the charts in some tests and bottom of the charts in others. But pick a memory intensive job that relies on high input output and loads of PCI Express, and it's just a gem. It is not a, is it a good system or not? It's a good system or not, depending on what you're doing with it. CPU temperatures under regular loads are absolutely fine, but then we have a Noctua cooler, which is uh, intended for this precise CPU type. Having said that, I am somewhat surprised PC Specialist has shipped this system with just three fans, two at the front, one at the rear. They are the stock fans. Just those three fans. The top of the case, to my mind, is crying out for a couple more fans. I cannot, I mean, obviously it's nothing to do with money. You know, fans in the context of a 5,200 pound system are free of charge. They might not be necessary. They certainly wouldn't do any harm. My view is, why wouldn't you put some fans in the roof? Let us look down the list of pros and cons for this system. Pros, clearly eight channel DDR4 memory delivers huge bandwidth. You've also got 32 cores of CPU performance. Speeds are entirely acceptable. 3.5 gigahertz base goes to 3.7 all cores. However, when you're running a single core, you can go up to 4.2 gigahertz. Depending on how many cores there for you in that range of 3.7 to 4.2 gigahertz. You've got a huge amount of IO, both in terms of USB and also PCI Express Gen 4 and Ethernet. You've got massive scope for upgrading this workstation. Uh, what we've got here is the absolute base configuration. So we've got one M.2 SSD installed. We've got two more slots, as you've seen. We've got that PCI Express card, which can accommodate another four. And then we've got one SATA drive around the back. So you could add, I don't know, 10 plus drives without any difficulty whatsoever. Cons. To my mind, DDR4 3200 megahertz ECC should be the baseline specification for the system. You can buy it as an upgrade, but it doesn't ship by default with that. Hopefully PC Specialist will change that. Uh, the orientation of the Noctua cooler. It just looks peculiar. Uh, that's all I can say. An all-in-one would actually look better. But that, of course, is not the point of a workstation. It's not to do with the aesthetics of the thing. So that's just on me. I would prefer to see a titanium or a platinum power supply. Gold is acceptable, but no more than that. More is what we want. Having said that, right now, the big shortage is just everything. Titanium and platinum power supplies are in very short supply. Even so, this is a very, very high-end workstation, and it deserves the best, in my opinion. The processor, even though 
Threadripper Pro has only just been released to system integrators and to retail buyers. It's been out for nine months, and of course we saw the 7002 Epics uh, released before the Zen 2 Threadripper. We know that AMD is about to release Zen 3 Threadripper. We have to assume, and this is a bit of a leap, that Zen 3 uh, Threadrippers and then maybe Threadripper Pros will be coming at some point in the next few months. We don't know that for sure. We know the epics are about to happen. We're not sure about the situation with Threadripper. So it could be that while this is a very grunty processor, there's an upgrade coming along very soon that will be uh, pin compatible that uh, you know, potentially could add another 10 or 20% performance. And that would obviously be well worth having. So question mark there. And as I've already mentioned, I'd like to see a few more case fans, particularly in the roof of the case. So relatively minor points. Fun enough, the price, as I've demonstrated, this is actually, despite being expensive, very good value for money. And I don't have an issue with the pricing whatsoever. Overall, I'm stunned by this workstation. Uh, it has no part in my daily life and it probably has no part in your daily life, but I trust it has blown your socks clean off.